Hello to all Jira server adepts and users. My name is Dimitri Hwip and I represent Divinity. We are an Atlassian Platinum Enterprise partner with more than 14 years on the market. Over 5 million people in 64 countries are benefiting from our apps for Jira, including companies like BlackBerry, Oracle, Sony, Audi and Cisco. We provide technology to boost your team's performance and quality support to maintain it. During today's web clinic, we'll talk about repetition. Repetition? Yes, repetition. You can find it practically in every kind of work there is. To produce anything of consistent quality and customer value, an optimal working model must be applied repetitively with precision. But humans are not built to keep up with such requirements. They tend to make mistakes and variate the work slightly, which is good for creativity but can sometimes lead to insufficient results. To help with this, templates are used, which generally apply a pre-produced form to the source material, speaking of hardware. In software, templates contain pre-programmed settings and field values, which is very useful if you need to reproduce the same things quite often. People sometimes perceive templates as rigid, hard to edit or blocking creativity. In fact, the situation is exactly vice versa. There is more spare time for creative work when the repetitive one has been already done. Moreover, since everything is editable in the digital realm, software templates become the most useful, especially when you work in an agile environment like Jira. As you may know, agile project management implies high iterativity and frequent change, be it about sprint planning, handling service desk requests, building a website or executing an email campaign. With the ability to template tasks, you and your team create commonly used issues just once. These serve you all the time and can be easily manipulated to suit your needs at any given moment. Unfortunately, the functionality of Jira that comes inside a box does not include issue templating. Having known that, we designed an app that helps your team maintain high-level performance. We are continually working to add up more value to it, so recently we have released version 7.0 of issue templates for Jira server one of the best-selling apps of Iris at the Atlassian Marketplace. It provides a lot of handy features and tricks to set your Jira server on fire. Among them are possibilities to autocomplete field values in the target issues, customize these tasks using variables, copy the subtasks attached to an issue template, or even copy a whole epic with all the issues linked to it. The main update of the new version is that we revamped the template configuration section with introducing a dedicated panel at the issue view. Thanks to this panel, the users have the entire configuration of a template available in a single place, even the scopes which previously were available only in the project settings. I'll show you how it actually works inside my Jira, but first I'll show you the app's listing page on the Atlassian Marketplace. As you can see, we've got the Atlassian Verified Batch which means that our apps fulfill the quality and usability requirements by Atlassian. On the listing, we see the basic info on the key features that I mentioned earlier, autocomplete, variables, copy subtasks and copy epic. There are screenshots and graphics which show how it works and looks like, and also a couple of links to useful videos and articles about the app. Let's proceed to Jira now. This is the very first page that you encounter after installing issue templates. We included a smart wizard for you to get started right away. Simply click on the issue category that you plan to work with and sample templates will be generated automatically inside the dedicated project. You can see this project in Jira under the default name templates and the key tab. You can change the project serving as the template repository if you need it strongly, but in most cases it's safer to leave it as it is. So we see that some templates were generated by the app which are ready to use off the spot so we can create tasks from them right away. This takes no more than 5 clicks. Have a look! So what happened here? The fields were filled in automatically based on the template settings and the data I typed in, which makes the issue creation process really nice and easy. Let's choose another template and see what happens. See it? 
we've created an issue which contains subtasks in less than 10 seconds. But obviously, to do so, you need to set it up first. Let me show you how it's done. At the issue view, we see that templates are generally treated the same way as any other issues in Jira. They can be of different issue types and contain both default and custom fields. By default, templates are assigned to their own issue types that are called template and subtemplate. But you can choose other issue types to make the list more transparent, and you should always choose the epic issue type if you want to make an epic template. However, the main difference is the configuration panel. You may already be familiar with the tabs that appear here. Previously, they were located at the Create Issue screen. Let's go through these tabs and see how we can set up a template. At the General tab, we see the most basic info. The template name is the one that will be shown on the template list, so it should be something descriptive to make it easier to find. The category adds the capability to group templates and organize them in a handy way. When you create an issue from a template, the drop-down selection is organized by those categories. I can either choose an existing category or simply type in a new one. It is saved automatically and can be used later on for other templates. The description field does not duplicate the one of the issue. Instead, it can include information about the template's goal or the linked subtasks, helping teams choose the right template faster. Now we proceed to scopes. In issue templates, a scope is a set of fields to be used in a specific action. We see that the scope section is divided into two parts, autocomplete and copy. In both cases, you need to name your set of fields and choose the fields to be included into it to set the scope. At least one functionality in the template needs to have a scope to make it work, and you may use two different scopes for autocomplete and copy. These features enable to automatically populate the target issue fields with values predefined in the template, either on the Create Issue screen or upon a pre-configured workflow transition. Since the 7.0 version came out, clicking the plus sign and typing in the data has been all it takes to quickly create and save a new scope. You can edit it at any moment by clicking the pencil icon. Previously the scopes used to be edited under the project settings. You can still do it this way, there is a link provided at the tab if you'd like to. There are advanced settings there as well. Every scope field can be marked as read only. You can do that to prevent other users from editing values that were inserted from the template into the issue creation form. With override checked, you can try to apply autocomplete from your template to an already existing issue and the field value will be overwritten from the template. The alternative source feature is the most interesting one. With this, you can set up copying values from the parent issue, which is extremely useful in case of using subtasks, or basically from any field belonging to any issue that you have in Jira. These settings give you a practically infinite possibility to automate issues, even between different projects. For instance, this way you can link data between your development and UX teams and simplify issue creation for the mockups and their respective features. In the availability section, you can make the template active and available to users or deactivate it. That means you don't have to delete the templates to clean up the list. You can just keep some of them inactive while the entire configuration will be preserved for later use. Moreover, you can choose the contacts in which a template will be available. For example, I can configure this one only to be available under my service desk project. A great example of a smart setup is a languages selector. This is very helpful if you work in a multilingual team and have the same issues in different languages. In such a case, you can simply create a template in each language and restrict its display to users via this selector. It's a great cleanup for a big project which can have thousands of issues on the list. The Jira Service Desk tab is only available to users who have installed Jira Service Desk, which is pretty obvious. In this section, you can make a given template available at the customer portal and pick the request types and projects to which a given template will be available. An active template with no specified request types will automatically become available to all of them. If we create a ticket at the customer portal, we'll have the selected template available, and the autocomplete feature will work here too, so we can make your customers' lives easier as well as yours. If it comes to subtasks, the template panel is slightly different. We see only two tabs here, scopes and create conditions. A subtask has to have a scope in order to get copied along with the parent issue, 
and a good thing to know is that you can assign a different set of fields to each subtask. At the second tab, you specify the stage when the subtask will be copied to the issue created from the template and also may provide an additional JQL condition upon which it should happen. This way you can automate issue creation for specific cases, like for example, approval tasks or situations when the parent issue needs the subtask only under a certain status, like critical or blocker. Stories located inside an Epic also feature the Agile tab. To use this feature, I should have an Epic template and a story inside it. This can be done only with Jira software installed. At the Agile tab, you can find two options. With only four Epic ticked, stories located inside Epics are not treated as separate templates and thus will not be displayed on the template list when creating an issue. With copy subtasks ticked, the subtasks which you add to the story will be copied to the target issue altogether. Please remember that this is not the substitute for the copy subtasks post function, which copies subtasks from the parent issue. So, to copy an epic from a template, I should do the following. Make sure that the stories inside the epic are also templates, which means they should be also created under the templates project. Make sure that the stories have the scope set for copy and the scope contains the epic name custom field. Go to target project settings and add the copy epic post function to the create issue transition. The autocomplete feature works here and highlights the fields populated automatically. An epic has been created and there are all the stories included into it. And with the copy subtasks checkbox ticked on the stories, we've included all the subtasks belonging to each story as well. So we've just copied a whole multi-level issue structure from a single template. But that's not all. You can customize the templates even further using variables. Let's get back to the template you already know for a minute. There are a couple of variables in it, which I'll explain. Generally speaking, there are two kinds of variables in issue templates, static and dynamic. In this case, we've got two static variables in the issue summary, the current username and the tomorrow's date. They will be replaced automatically. Below in the description, we have three dynamic variables, which help specify what kind of hardware and software the user needs. As I said, the values in the summary have been filled in automatically and now I have to choose the dynamic values. Then I hit replace all button and they are filled into their respective places. By the way, there is a checkbox in the variables configuration which replaces them automatically if turned on, so I even don't have to click the button. Now let's see some of the not so obvious tricks that issue templates can do. If a template is used often, there are many issues created from it. Sometimes you may need to search for all the issues created from a specific template. Here is the article in our user documentation where a dedicated JQL query is provided. As I said, we can disable templates without deleting them to clean up the list. But this can also be automated by applying the disable enable template post function or the workflow transition. If a certain issue in a project is created most of the time, it makes sense to make it default. This is done in the apps configuration where you can pair projects and issue types to be associated with a template. It is very handy for non-technical users who don't know much about Jira, they get everything on a plate and only have to fill in the values for variables. For technical people though, we've got the possibility to create issues from templates via REST API. Since there is no create screen visible when creating an issue this way, only the old copy values method is allowed here. The parameters that are passed in the request have to include the template ID as the custom field value. The copy workflow function is required to copy values from the selected template. You can see an example in our user documentation. So, as we see, if you face the challenge of creating repetitive issues, you can help them get the work done quickly and efficiently with only one app for Jira. Templates significantly reduce the amount of unforced errors that could be committed by your team and thus increase consistency of their work. They save plenty of time for your employees and therefore save money for the company. That's why you should consider giving Issue Template 7 a go at your organization. There is a multitude of possibilities of its use. Issue templating may be extremely useful for development-related tasks such as deployment. Autocomplete feature enables to type in the instructions for the deployer just once and only update them at times. 
Service Desk agents can do the same thing for cant responses. You just set up an automated command on every cost issue and go along. One of the most common examples of using subtasks is a new employee's onboarding, which is a highly repetitive task in itself. There, you can include such activities as preparing a workplace, setting up hardware and software, preparing all the documents, and so on. That's where you can save lots of time on creating issues. Simply create a story template with all the subtasks in it and throw in a couple of variables, like the new employee's name and position. This will help you deal with the task in a couple of clicks each time, well, at least on the Jura side. If you make product presentations on a regular basis, you would probably also use subtasks to make the workflow clear and transparent. This kind of work is often done one piece by one. First, you gather all the required information and write a text, then create some multimedia slides to support it and prepare a promotional campaign for the whole. You may want to add these subtasks to the parent issue one by one as well and have this process automated. To do it, create all the tasks inside your template and specify the appropriate conditions for each one. And let's say you also organize events where you talk about your products, provide troubleshooting tips, discuss the latest news from your industry and whatnot. In this case, your product presentation will be just a part of a more complex task, or speaking in terms of Jira, a story inside an epic. The epic for the whole event may also include organization and promotion stories, which may contain tasks like book a venue, make a guest list, or prepare social media content. If you've got a dedicated team for this kind of work or need a more detailed workflow, these tasks may be divided into subtasks as well. That's a great load of issues to create, but as I've shown, you can make up the whole structure once and store it inside your templates project. This is tremendously convenient. This year, we are planning to add or rework even more features to the app. The main news is that the template navigator is coming up where you'll be able to see all the templates, filter them and drop permissions and contacts on a whole category. We also plan on adding the possibility to schedule frequent tasks and create linked template structures. The default templates configuration will also be available at the issue panel along with the context configuration for them and we'll publish a template catalog online, so stay tuned to our news. Apart from issue templates, you may get interested in other tools for Jira Server that help enhance your team's performance even further. With dynamic forms, you can improve your user interface by displaying fields on the screens based on values selected previously by the user. Active Directory Attribute Sync app synchronizes Jira users' profiles with attributes from Active Directory like address, phone number, manager name or any custom field. The Condition Validator, also known as Help, shows all the conditions for available actions and displays which conditions are passed by the user and which are not. Want to know more about us? We are blogging once a week on our website. User documentation for our apps, information about the events we take part in and the webinars we host are available at the support webpage. We can also find us on Facebook, Twitter and Instagram. Follow Divinity Apps by the links you see on the screen to track the latest news from our company, our partners and IT in general. In case of inquiries regarding our products, please get in touch with the Divinity support team. Have a nice day and goodbye!